that's where the flight has come to rest. Piers? Uh, Barbara, why are they so convinced that it may have gone to the bottom of the ocean when many other people are theorizing from this information about the pings that it could potentially have been hijacked or, or stolen to order and landed somewhere? Why do they believe it has actually crashed into the sea? Well, I think there's a couple of questions here. One is, you know, what caused the plane to disappear, if you will? Was it a deliberate act? Was it sabotage? Was, was it espionage? Uh, uh, was it sabotage? Was it some kind of hijacking? We do not know the answer to that. Nobody at the moment really knows the answer to that because they have no definitive intelligence or information that leads them to believe it was an act of terrorism, sabotage, a deliberate act pilot suicide, any of these theories that we've all heard for the last several days. What they do have is data, information now, technical, highly technical data that tells them the likely path of the plane. In other words, where it is, not why and how it exactly got there. There is also a very key radar blip, if you will, from the Malaysians that showed the plane turning around. Uh, instead of heading to China, it's heading off the west coast of the Malay Peninsula. That was one of their first indications. Now they have the correlating other satellite data. So they're beginning to put the clues together, beginning to put the pieces together, all of this leading them now to turn their attention to the Indian Ocean. Barbara Starr, thank you very much indeed for that report. We'll join me now on the phone with more on the trail of the plane. It's Wall Street Journal <coughs> reporter John Ostroud. Uh, John Ostroud, thank you for joining me. You just heard Barbara Starr's report there. Clearly, what seems to now be indisputable is the fact that these pings were heard suggesting the plane carried on flying for four to five hours after we have been led to believe in the first few days. What is now conjecture, or, but what the US uh, authorities believe, is that it landed in the Indian Ocean. But you have a different theory. Tell me what that is. Well, uh, we were just reporting just moments ago that the Malaysia Airlines Boeing 777 that's been missing since uh, late last Friday uh, actually continued to ping uh, the satellites that are 22,000 miles above the, the surface of the Earth for at least five hours. So that adds an additional hour onto the, the last known position of where the aircraft was. These pings in particular... Uh, included very detailed information that investigators are now using to uh, triangulate the aircraft's potential position now. They, those included things like the GPS location, the speed, and the altitude of the aircraft. After at least five hours of transmitting, the signal stopped. Investigators really right now are trying to determine why it stopped, and that's really the central question of this investigation. Right, but as I say, Barbara Starr just reported uh, for CNN that the belief of U.S. officials is that it is it highly probable this plane is now at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Does that correlate to anything that you have heard in relation to what they believe happened at the end of the pings? Well, we don't know, uh, and, and certainly the data right now um, suggests that the aircraft was flying. Uh, the, the, the data that we have and the reporting that we've just done indicates the airplane was uh, in a normal cruise altitude when it when it stopped broadcasting. So, so certainly, um, you know, you take that to a few different um, logical conclusions as you continue the investigation, and you can you can arrive at one that says uh, it has crashed. You can say it it maybe has uh, landed somewhere. At this point, uh, these, this is the, the central focus of where the investigation is going. And uh, the U.S. Navy has okay. dispatched... Uh, John, John Ostrow, John Ostrow, thank you very much indeed. We've actually kept Barbara Starr. Barbara, I wanted to get your reaction to the Wall Street Journal report. Clearly, a lot of similarities there, although I guess the conclusion is, is still up for conjecture, depending on who you talk to. What did well, you make of what it, he just said? Yeah, you know, if you want to add to the mystery of all of this or the uncertainty, what officials are also telling us is this plane, like all planes, carried a system, essentially a beacon, that would have gone off if the plane was going to make impact somewhere. In other words, if it was going to hit the water, hit land, this is that kind of emergency beacon that goes off and it, it registers and transmits the data of impact. So far, U.S. officials say they don't see any data that that emergency beacon system went off. Certainly nothing that the Malaysians have shared with them yet. Uh, so that adds to the mystery. The plane 
uh, if that did not go off, was certainly for some period of time in some form of relatively stable flight, officials say. But did it land somewhere? We've asked everybody, and I have to tell you, you get the same answer, Piers. You know, head scratching in today's modern world, in today's age, is it actually pl plausible that a passenger airliner with so many people on board landed somewhere and nobody noticed? But at the same time, Barbara, clearly everything about this story is highly mysterious, if not Absolutely. suspicious. You know, I mean, it seems, I think most viewers will be sharing my utter disbelief that it's taken nearly a week to discover that they had these ping signals and this data information. Presumably, they, they had that pretty immediately, and yet we're just hearing about it now. Why has it taken so long? Yeah. Well, you know, I think behind the scenes, U.S. officials will tell you uh, that they have some frustration with this entire situation. It, it is the Malaysians who are essentially running the show here, running uh, the search operation. Uh, U.S. officials say it was only in the last 24 hours that the Malaysian government shared this specific technical data with them. The U.S. <coughs> pardon me. The U.S. has a number of very highly uh, trained imagery uh, and radar and satellite specialists out there looking at every scrap of information. But if the Malaysians don't share what they know, they don't share what they have, it becomes very difficult. That's why they say there has been some delay. And, and really, uh, as Richard Quest has been saying on CNN all week long, it is just an unprecedented situation all the way around, Pairs. Barbara, stay with us. I want to bring in some experts now for a panel. David Susi is the author of Why Planes Crash, an accident investigator's flight for, a fight for safe skies, aviation expert and retired American Airlines pilot Jim Tillman, and Matthew Robinson, an air safety investigator with Robson Forensic. Welcome to all of you. Uh, let me start with you, Jim Tillman. We've talked before this week uh, about the various twists and turns, quite literally, uh, of the fate of this plane. What do you make of these extraordinary new revelations? Well, they're just about as confusing as everything else I've heard about this, uh, this uh, event uh, from the very beginning. For example, let's talk about pings. It's my understanding that these devices don't ping until they're, they're hitting water, until they get into water. And if the pings went on and all of a sudden stopped over the Indian Ocean, that's just the opposite of the way that I have always understood them to work. That, they really, that should be when they really start going. The other thing is, I've got to tell you that I, I, I find it very difficult to believe that this, this captain and, and his crew decided to just commit suicide out there in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They didn't have to go that far in order to commit suicide. I mean, uh, and, then, and they had to know that's where they were. If they were conscious, and I'm not altogether certain that they were, I mean, if they had some kind of a situation aboard the airplane that caused them to be incapacitated, and they were just sitting there and, and riding the airplane until it reached a point where it was out of fuel or out of, out of uh, CG, out of balance, then that would explain a lot of things. I'm afraid I'm still not really convinced that the airplane crashed. I, it, I just haven't seen enough data or enough damage that, uh, that, that floated to the top or landed on the ground. I haven't seen any of that. And you heard also about the ELT, the emergency uh, uh, transmitter. That's if the airplane hits something, an object like the ground, and it's on land. Well, that didn't go off. And, and also, I wonder where it is, just like everybody else. OK, now let me turn now to David Seuss, the former FAA safety inspector. Clearly, let, let's remind all of us and everyone watching, we don't have the answers here. This is one of the great mysteries in aviation history uh, and gets more mysterious by the day. Having said that, we have more information than we seem to have had at any stage in this week. If you take the assumption that these pings... I mean, it's interesting what I thought Jim Tillman just said, that the, the pings themselves, is that correct? Do you know when they are supposed to go off? Do they go off when a plane is at normal altitude, or do, are they supposed to just work when a plane hits the water? I'm out of the ACAR system which is a data link that provides information from the aircraft continuously if the satellite's available 
uh, continuously from that aircraft. So it's, it's intended to provide all the information that, the, that John mentioned before from Wall Street, is the, uh, the, en the engine information, the speed information. It even it, it tells us about vibration information. If there was a, a bomb or something that happened dramatically on board, or a fire even would cause enough vibration, that that data would have been sent back. There's 10,000 data points a second that are being sent through that ACAR system. So I find it difficult to believe that those pings contain data. I do believe that those pings do exist and that the United States satellites have been picking up those pings and maybe the Malaysian as well. Those pings are just simply a phone call that's waiting for an answer. It doesn't mean that there's any data in it at all until the answer comes in that says, yeah, we're speaking the same language. Now that we are, I'm gonna upload all the data that I've been storing out of my ACAR system, the aircraft uh, uh, tracking and reporting system, uh, communication and reporting system, excuse me, which is sending in all that information up. So it's designed that when it's connected to a satellite, it's constantly sending that information back to Boeing and, uh, well, sends it back to Air Inc., which is a company that disperses the information. But that information then goes to Rolls-Royce, it goes to Boeing, it goes to the manufacturer from there. So uh, to me, the pings are very viable. It's what should be happening, what's confusing to me. Uh, two things that are confusing to me about that is that those pings that are coming off of there, uh, why then does, is, there not a, is there not a transponder still on Could that was turned off? That's the only explanation I would have because if the electrical system failed to the extent where there's no communication, there's no SATCOM, there's no UHF, there's no VHF, there's no way for that pilot to communicate, uh, why then would just that ACARS pinging be going on? Okay, L let me just take a break here. Uh, Matthew Robinson, when we come to you after the break, I, I want to get really a sense from you about the mounting theory through the day today that this plane could potentially have been stolen to order. Who knows by who or for what purpose, but is that possible from all that you have seen and read today? We'll come back after the break and get your response. <laughs> 